Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a worksheet tutorial video on simple linear equations. This is from mathdrills.com. There'll be a link to the website and also my playlist for mathdrills.com videos if you want to check out that. There's also a little, a little box at the end if you want to click on that at the end of this video. Regardless, this is simple linear equations. Another way of saying it is one and two step equations. So what we're gonna do here, our goal is to get the variable by itself. We want A to be equal by itself. So I'm gonna kind of break down how, like the simple process doing that. If you need more help, I have additional videos if you wanna check those out. But I think you should be good with just this video. What do we have happening to A? That's the first step. What is happening to our variable? This essentially means A divided by eight, okay? So if we want to undo that and get A by itself, how do you undo dividing by eight? To undo operations in math, we multiply when we divide. We do the opposite operation. So the opposite of divide is multiply. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation, this equation because it has an equal sign, by 8. Okay. Now, why did we multiply by 8? What's the point there? Well, 8 times divide by 8. Okay. So if we have 8 times divide by 8, those multiply and divide essentially cancel out each other, okay? Another way of looking at it is we have eight over eight, which equals one. Well, one times a, which would be the case here, eight over eight times a, that would be equal to just a. We get it by itself. If you, The simplest way of, of just thinking about it is it, it cancels out the operation that's taking place. So if you do the opposite, it cancels it out. So after we do this, these cancel and we're left with just a, okay? That's what takes place here. Then we have negative four times eight, and that goes on the right side. And that's gonna be our value of a. So we have negative four times eight, uh, negative times a positive is gonna give us a negative 32. And that's our answer, okay? And I wanted to highlight it because it makes it look cool. Oh, not if I mess it up. Let's try that one more time. There we go. Okay, so a equals negative 32. Let's just go ahead and jump to number six. I like going left to right. What's happening here? Well, if we have 2z, what that means is 2 times z, okay? Now, how do you undo times? We have, if we have z times 2, what do we need to do? Well, we would need to divide. Dividing is the opposite of multiplication, so we would need to divide by 2 to both sides. And I want to use a different color, actually, just so you can see the effect that we're doing something that's the opposite to both sides. So now, this 2 divided by 2, Okay, again, that's one. Essentially, just think of it this way. The easiest way to think of it is it just cancels it out. So we have just z on the left side, and now we have two divided by two. You could write it like that. Either way, it's z equals one. And the reason why I put a line through my z is so it doesn't look like a two, just FYI. So we have z equals one. Two divided by two is one. And that's it, okay? We're gonna do opposite operations. I wanna see if there's another one that's just one step, okay? Because we're getting into two steps here. Let's go on to number two. What happens if we have minus minus? Well, think of negatives as like a debt, okay? You're gonna, you have to owe somebody money. So if you subtract that, it means you're taking away a debt. If you take away a debt, that means, oh, that's money I'm earning. So essentially, that was a long-winded way of saying anytime you see minus minus next to each other like that, change it to plus, okay? So now we have B plus five equals 13. Something plus five equals 13. Well, if you wanna know what that something is, we have to go in the opposite direction. We have to get rid of that minus five opposite operation of that, minusing, okay? So if we added five, we wanna subtract that five. Five minus five is zero, okay? B plus zero is just B, that's the whole point. With addition and subtraction, it goes to zero. With multiplication and division, it goes to one. Either way, we get B by itself, that's the goal. Think of it as just canceling out, okay? That's the easiest way to think of it. Now we have 13 minus uh, five, and that is eight. So we have B equals eight as our answer, B, plus, or excuse me, B minus a negative, uh, sorry, eight minus a negative five equals 13. That's what we're doing for this one, okay? Man, I keep doing that. There, how about that? Okay, now let's get into some two-step equations, starting with number 11. Uh, no, <laughs> psych, I wanna do, well, we have another one step here, so let's do this one real fast. We have Y divided by negative seven, so we wanna do the opposite, which is multiply by negative seven, okay? Don't just multiply by positive seven, you wanna multiply by the uh, the number that's listed here. If we're dividing by negative seven, we need to multiply by negative seven. So it cancels out, we have y equals negative seven times negative seven, positive 49, 
There's our answer. Look at that highlighter. Okay, there we go. Now we're cooking. There's a couple other one-step ones, but I, I kinda wanna get into the two-step at this point. Let's go on to number three. With number three, we have two things going on. We also, we have some, oof, this one's a tough one. <laughs> Let me get to a different one first before getting to that one. Okay, so I want to do, I wonder if, ah, here's a good one, number seven. Ah, number 11 is probably the easiest. We should have just gone with that one. Yeah, let's go ahead and go to number 11. So number 11, and then we'll go back to those ones that I said were kind of tough. So we got two things going on. One, we have B being divided by two. Two, we have this minus sign in front of B. And then three, we have this 10 there, okay? If it's just a 10, what's really going on is this is a positive 10. So to do the opposite of positive 10, we would minus 10, okay? But I'm getting ahead of myself. What we want to do first is how do you know what to get rid of first? You want to get rid of stuff that's furthest away from B. And then you slowly work your way in towards the stuff that's closest to B, okay? Essentially, you're going to do opposite operations or opposite order of operations until you get to B by itself. So we have a positive 10 here. We're going to subtract 10 from both sides first. That's our first step. That cancels, okay? That's the whole point. That's the reason why we decided to subtract 10. And now we have, keep that minus there, minus B over two. I like to always move that minus to the numerator. I think it makes it easier, okay? Equals, and then I have negative seven. Three minus 10, negative seven. So now I have a one-step equation. I have negative B over two, okay? Um, I, a couple different things. I like, again, I like moving it to the numerator, but really you could make this a negative two. It's, as long as you put it either in the numerator or denominator, it's fine. So if you like leaving B by itself, just leave it uh, the negative two in the de denominator for this. Actually, kind of is a better way to go. Um, but we're gonna multiply it by negative two. If we divide by negative two, we need to do the opposite operation, which cancels it, and we get B equals negative seven times negative two, positive 14, okay? So that's our answer there positive 14. And the reason why I like just keeping in the numerator is it's just consistent. And it's I think it's easier to know, uh, to remember, sorry. Okay, this one's a little bit different. Number three, I said was different. We got a couple things going on here. So one, we have, again, we have an adding three, we have 18 divided by that variable. Okay, so that's a little bit different. Um, but it's not gonna be that bad. So the first thing we do, again, the stuff that's furthest away, and then work our way in. So we're gonna subtract three from both sides. After we get that, we get 18 divided by Z equals nine. Okay, now we got the tricky part. What's happening to Z? It's being divided, okay? So Z is being divided, which is not good. We want Z to be by itself, and right now, it essentially is the same thing as this. We don't, that's, not, that's no good, okay? So I think the easiest thing to do is if you have a fraction over here with Z in the denominator, make a fraction on the right side too. So it's nine, but how do you turn nine into a fraction? You put it over one, okay? So now we have 18 over Z, nine over one, fraction on both sides. When you get here to this point, okay, a lot of people like to call this a proportion, that's what it is. We are going to cross multiply, okay? So we are gonna do the 18 times the one on one side of the equal sign, we're gonna keep our equal sign there, and then we're gonna have nine times Z on the right. I think that's the easiest way to, to explain it. There's other ways to do it. So be like, oh, my teacher taught me something else. Okay, that's fine. But I just wanted to make you aware that I think this is the easiest in general for most people to understand. So now we have 18 times one and nine times Z. That's 18 equals nine Z. So what's happening to Z now? It's being multiplied by nine. So I need to divide by nine to both sides and I get 18 divided by nine is two, that cancels, that's the whole point of doing that, and we get z equals two, okay? So that's a way to think about it. Another way to think about it is, okay, 18 divided by what um, is gonna give me nine, and obviously, if you just got to this point, you're like, oh, something divided by, 18 divided by something goes nine, I know z equals two, that's fine. Just know that the way I did it with the cross multiplication is like, the two-step process in, in how to solve it, okay? Um, let's do one more tough one like that. I'm gonna jump to 14. This is a one step of that. We have negative two over C equals two. Again, my process, my recommendation is to put this over one and then cross multiply. So I would cross multiply once you get to this step if you have C in the denominator, okay? That's a key feature. So we'd get negative two times one is just negative two and then we'd have two C on the right. 
and then we just divide by two, okay? That way we don't have to worry about a variable in the denominator. So C equals negative one, there's our answer, okay? So that's just another version of that. You're gonna have to do the same thing with like number eight, you have a, in the denominator, um, number four, uh, and I'm gonna do number four and then number 15 to finish up, okay? So I don't wanna spend too much of your time talking. You should just get to it. So I have a negative nine here. I'm gonna do opposite order of operations. I wanna do the stuff that's furthest away from A and then get to the stuff that's closest last. If I have a negative nine, I do the opposite of adding nine to both sides. So I have 36 divided by A, it's not negative this time, that's good, equals four. So I like to put this over one, cross multiply, 36 times one is just 36, and then four A. Now I have to divide by four because it's four times A, the opposites divide by four, and that cancels, and now we have 36 divided by four, that is nine equals A, and that's our answer, okay? So there's four, and now we're moving on to our last one, number 15. Again, if you need more of these done, just leave a comment and I'll help you with it. So we have C divided by five plus three, we wanna do the furthest stuff away first, so minus three to both sides, and we have five. Then we have C over five, okay? C divided by five, so we're gonna do the opposite, which is multiplied by five to both sides. Make sure you do it both sides. That cancels out. That's the whole point of choosing times five. It's the opposite operation. Cancels out, we get C equals 25. 25 divided by five plus three equals eight, final answer. And that's all there is to it. If you need help with any of these other questions I didn't do, leave a comment and I'll help you with it. Uh, otherwise, make sure to check out my math drills playlist uh, in the description and also at the end of this video. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.